tattoo I'm getting uh, right now is an hourglass with wings flying through a thunderstorm. And it just kind of symbolizes my life going through up to where I'm at right now in time. When in uniform, I have to be the exact same as everyone else. I need to look exactly like them. Tattoos is kind of just like a way of me expressing myself and showing everybody else that when I'm not in uniform, I am somebody different. I am, you know, I am me. Since the day we opened the shop, it was basically the only people we tattoo here are soldiers. They're putting their hearts and souls on these one-of-a-kind tattoos. It's my body, it's my life. This is my art, and I want to design it. There's a tattoo coming along. We're just about done with the drawing. Are you raving right now? Yeah. I decided to work on this big uh, Norse piece for my back. I'll put the uh, Norse tree of life. Its roots are going to extend down into uh, the Norse underworld. Instead of just throwing a tree in the middle of his back, we're going to incorporate it with a Viking style shield. That shield thing is also part of that intimidation. A lot of ancient civilizations just painted themselves up blue or green to intimidate their enemies. So tattoos kind of became a permanent war paint. You know how many times I got smoked for having this tattoo? It's a fetus in a blender. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Tell me that it ain't funny. Yes, we really don't know what we're in for. I mean, you kind of look at this tattoo in a literal sense, the small child in a blender that doesn't know what's fixing to happen to it. You know, it's fixing to get all chopped up and chewed up and turned to mush. And I guess there's a possibility of that happening to me. Since the day we opened the shop, that's all we've been hearing are their stories, their woes, their fears. You know, they're see, some of these kids are terrified to go. And the ones that came back unscathed, you know, physically, uh, still have some serious, serious psychological issues, which, which, from what I hear, are hardly being addressed at all, if at all. Uh, it's just like Vietnam. They're just putting them back on the street, like, next. don't want to go back all that much. The whole glorious charges you see in all the movies and they ain't, they ain't it. <laughs> I don't mind fighting, you know, the whole warrior heritage thing I'm always talking about, but there's certain aspects of this stuff that I'm just not looking forward to. You know, I had two friends burnt up in the back of a Bradley, you know, like melted into the structure of the Bradley. I think, you know, you look at the news, yeah, you know, some poor soldiers got blown up. You know, I know it was, and there's some poor other guy who knew them who has to scrape what's left of them out of the inside of the vehicle. That's one unfortunate thing I got going for me is I've been there before. I know what happens. I don't have that feeling of invincibility that some of the new guys have, you know. Cause when it's time for it, we don't need a mask.